Hi everybody, I'm Trisha from Club Scrap and thanks for watching. You know, I love gifts that help me keep track of special occasions throughout the year and keep me organized. This book does all of that and more. And let me show you how this comes together. It has a nice, beautiful cover and inside we have six by nine clasp envelopes. On one side of the envelope, we keep track of our special occasions and then inside we can put all those cards that we plan to send out. Let me show you how to put this together. <laughs> Now the first part of this book that we're going to make will be the accordion spine. In the past I've always had to fold the paper in half and in half again and it was very difficult and challenging to make it accurate. And so let me introduce you to my new favorite tool, the score it. Now the way this is set up is that it has this horizontal measuring grid right here that helps me know where to put my score lines. It has this non-slide surface here so my paper stays put and it has this measuring rule right here. It's a blade that's, that's a blunt edge blade that helps me make the score line. And then it also has this little tool. And I love it because they've even thought to attach it to a ball chain because if you're like me you lose your stuff all the time and this always stays attached to the tool. And it can attach to the right or the left side of the tool so that that can reflect which is my primary hand. When we're using the paper, we always work with the right side of the paper down. So I'm just going to turn it over, and my first score line needs to be at three quarters of an inch. So with my measuring rule here, I'm just going to line up the paper so it's straight along the edge, and it's not going to move anywhere because it's stuck to the board. And I'm going to take the tool, and it has this little notch right here in the front. I'm going to engage the notch right into this little opening, and I'm going to push down. Now, the thickness of the paper will depend on how much pressure you need to put as you make the score line. Now, just flip it over and continue. Now, I'm going to engage and slide. Done. So, you're going to continue making your score lines all the way down the edge of your paper and each time making your score at three quarters of an inch, which will produce the perfect accordion spine. So, let me show you how that scored paper looks when we get it finished. Here it is. I'm not sure if you can see them, but all the score lines are in place and they're perfectly even. So when I go to make my accordion folds, it'll be a piece of cake. All I do is just fold on the line. What's great about this too is that the paper fibers don't break when you're making the score line. They just get moved around. So when the spine is complete, it looks just like this. And there it is. Now the next thing we're going to do is make a decorative embellishment for the front cover of our book. So once again, we're going to be using a paper. We're starting this time with just a plain paper, and this time I'm going to put it right in the center on my tool. I'll engage the tool and run it across, and what I'm doing at this point is making a decorative debossed grid of lines, and I'll explain more about that as we go. And the lines are one inch apart, so I'm just adding an embossed line at this point onto the paper one inch apart, and I'll do that on the other side as well. Then I'll find the horizontal center of the paper. And I'm making a center line, sliding it down an inch. And you can see now what's happening is we're creating a one inch square on our paper. Let me show you how this paper will look when it's completely finished. At this point you can see all of the raised lines and these happen to be on the wrong side of the paper, but let me show you how cool those raised lines actually look as a decorative element. I'm going to take an ink pad and I'm going to rub the ink pad across the raised lines and you can see how cool that looks as a decorative piece. Now, we are actually, for today's project, we're going to use the other side of the paper. Now it's right side up and all the lines that are on here are indented or debossed. This time I'm going to take the ink pad and I'm going to run it horizontally across the paper to highlight the edges of each of those squares that were created with those debossed lines. Next, I'll run the pad the other direction to get the top and bottom edges of those squares that we made and really highlight them. Another thing that you can do too with this faux mosaic tile look is add a stamped image. I'm going to add a pattern. When I add patterns with rubber stamps, I always stamp at an angle, so if I have any imperfections in my pattern, um, I don't have to worry about it looking a little off-center. So I'm making a line at an angle of these stamped images. When I begin my next row, I offset it like a brick pattern. Next, let's wrap the cover onto some mat board. So here I have my stiff mat board that's going to give me a nice sturdy cover. And then using good gluing technique, my goal is to not use too much, but to make sure I use enough. So I'll take some lines of glue and I'm going to use my foam brush while I hold 
my mat board in midair and fan the glue out to the outer edges. Once this is thoroughly covered, all you simply need to do is center the piece of mat board onto that cover piece that you made earlier. Really, you can make this any size. It just sort of depends on what size envelope you would like to use. Make sure the paper bonds with the cover, and then we're going to miter the corners. In this case, you really want to make sure that when you cut the corners, you leave enough paper extending beyond the edge of the corner so that you'll be able to cover that corner well with the paper. Once you cut the corners, we'll use a bone folder to pre-fold our paper around the mat board. All right, now our flaps have been taught where they're going to live. We're going to start out by gluing our long flaps with the glue that already remains in the tip of the brush. In fact, I'm just going to get ahead of myself here a little bit and glue the other long flap and then I'll put them into place. Okay, that bone folder is really going to help that flap bond with the mat board. And then I have this overhang right here. So I'm just going to take the tip of my finger and fold that in a bit so that when I put glue on my flap and turn the corner, I have a beautiful mitered corner that, that will look like professional made it. All right, now all four flaps have been wrapped around the mat board. If it is a little bit warped like this, it simply means there's moisture from the glue. As that dries, your cover will flatten out again, so don't worry about that. Now I'm going to use some Magic Mesh. I love this product because it comes in tons of different colors and sizes of weave. I happen to be using a, a roll that comes in one yard length, and it's two and a half inches wide. So I'm just going to open some of this up, unroll it from the roll, and I can place it right on my project. And I love how it just adds a bit of dimension without adding bulk. And I can place this, if I happen to not like where I've placed it, I can just lift it back up again and then relocate it or position it exactly where I want it to be. You can even die cut it, you can punch it, a lot of different things and it helps you just kind of explore into new creative territory. And then I'll take the mesh and wrap it around to this side of the book and then, then it's going to stay put there. Okay, now I'm going to add the inside cover onto my work surface right on top of the cover. And this is from Club Scrap's Musical Interlude Kit, by the way. It's a full complete kit with that music theme. All the papers match and are coordinated. And it's a gorgeous set of 80 pound cover papers along with all kinds of coordinating things. Now, what I've gone ahead and done, just, just to save some time, is I've completed the back cover as well. You can see I've added a sticker here from Club Scrap 2, just to kind of finish this off on the back side, more mesh, and I've sandwiched a ribbon in between the cover itself and then the paper that goes on the inside. So that's sandwiched in there. It's about an 18 inch length of ribbon. Next, what I need to do is attach my accordion spine that I made earlier. So when you take your spine and you have it wrong side up, you can squeeze together all of these folds and then you'll end up with two folds on the outside. So basically you'll see a cut edge and your very first valley fold. That's the piece that gets attached to your book cover. So we want to be careful to do to glue the right piece. So I'm going to put glue on this one. I'm going to attach it to the front cover first. Notice I'm putting my glue on my flap, not on the cover. And I do need it thoroughly covered so that the flap stays put. So I'm going to make sure I reach my outer edges just by fanning. And when I place this down on my cover, I'm going to center it from top to bottom, and I want to make sure that I'm aligning this edge right here. Once I know that I have it perfectly in place, I'll turn this over and make sure that that cover piece is firmly where it needs to be. Next, remember where my glue goes, it will go onto this flap right here. All right, so here my flap covered with glue, and in this case, it takes a little bit more coordination. I'm just going to position it and basically get my other cover out of the way so I can see once again that I'm aligning it from top to bottom and that this first fold is in alignment with the edge of my book cover. If this isn't even from top to bottom like it was on the other cover, the two covers don't line up, so that's an important tip to remember. So now my book is assembled and attached and ready for inside pages. Let me just review how these flaps work for a minute. Your first page will be attached to the front side of a flap, and I like to attach my pages from the back to the front. So here's page one, page two, three, four, five, and six. That's how the, the pages will be attached. Only one page per flap. And I'm also going to attach the page so that the clasp is on the front. So let's make sure we put our glue. It will basically would have been the front of the envelope. Then I'm just going to drop the page down into the valley fold right here. So it's lined up from bottom to top. And I always cut my accordion spine so that they're the same height as my pages. Then just press it into place 
and now my first page is completely attached. Then you will just fold this down and attach another page until you have all the envelopes attached in your book and then it will be complete. Now I talked earlier about putting your special occasion greeting cards into those pocket pages so let me show you how you can use a score it tool to make those as well. And now I have my score it tool set up in front of me so I can make a whole bunch of cards in a really short period of time with the help of this little gadget called the stop guide. It comes with the tool and I'm making cards that are five and a quarter inch square so I'm going to actually attach this little guide right at five and a quarter inches. I'll hold it in place with one hand and I will secure it with the other. When it's nice and secure, I'm ready to make a whole bunch of cards. So I'm going to place my card under the score it right side down and I'm going to just bring the corner in so it, it edges up with the stop guide and with the horizontal measuring grid. I'll take my tool and I'm going to make my score line. One of the things I did not know about score lines was that you want the debossed or indented portion of the score line to be on the outside of the card. That's why we always work with our paper face down. And now when I go to fold my card in half, it works perfectly. You can also make score lines on translucent paper, really fine thin paper, all the way up to 24 point chipboard. All you have to do is just make sure you use a little bit more pressure. So now that we have our cards, we can decorate them with magic mesh and we have a whole stack of them right here that I've created. All of the cards were made in a snap with the help of my little score it tool and that decorative mesh gives me all of the embellishment that I was looking for on my cards without adding all the bulk and now the set of 24 cards that I made will easily fit into those pocket pages in my accordion book. Well, so here I'm tucking in all my cards into my pocket pages in this book but then over here I have some other great things you can do like this little book it just has these fold lines. I measured them out and did it with my score tool and it just turns out so much neater and better. And then I've got it encircled with dotty mesh, one of the other flavors of magic mesh. It's also self-adhesive and then it opens up to reveal all these little coin envelopes with tags inside. Finally, this was like a little discovery that I made as I was playing with the tool. I call this freestyle scoring and you'll notice the exterior of my book has these really cool lines going in all different directions. And in this case, they're embossed, or the raised lines, not the debossed. I covered them with ink in the same way that I did earlier, and I just love the random pattern it creates. All of these handmade books with accordion spines, my cards, everything was made with the help of one of my new favorite tools. So Merry Christmas, and thanks for watching. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.